When looking at this picture, one can observe how long ago it was taken, 2009 to be exact, the last time the Colonials had won an ice hockey championship. Fast forward to 2020, and the Colonials finally would regain that title. This is their story. Basically, from the start of the year, I think everything just clicked right off the bat. Um, we did this hockey camp as a team over the summer in Brigantine down the shore, and from there, that was just the perfect way to start off the year. We all got really close and comfortable around each other, and it was just a great team bonding experience. Uh, I just remember, you know, eating the same foods, sleeping the same patterns, driving the same car together to the rink or wherever we were going and you know I just remember waking up at seven in the morning going to yoga and struggling like with the whole team and you know you just made a lot of great memories like that and it was just a lot of fun all year. Yeah so I would say probably favorite team activity there's probably two of them actually it's either definitely the pasta parties you know you're just eating some pasta hanging with the boys you know maybe you're playing xbox or ps4 but like you just go there, eat, eat dinner, you know, just hang out, get closer as a team. And probably the second one would have to be uh, right before the games, right before you walk out. You know, you, we get the uh, speaker ready and we play Fortunate Sons, which, uh, you know, you feel like you're, you're going to war with the boys. You know, you're just getting ready, getting hyped. And then after that, we would play Randy Dandia, which is not your typical walkout song, probably, but... Uh, it's definitely, definitely uh, gets the boys going, you know, when you're all in the locker room just singing it, getting hyped, getting ready to go. The Colonials were tight and they had the chemistry needed to be a team of greatness, but now awaited their ultimate test. They were minutes away from a championship ice hockey game. You can talk a lot of talk, but this was the point when they would need to walk the walk. Mindset going into the championship game, uh, we had already beaten them three times in the regular season, so we were definitely we, we knew we could beat them. We knew we could go in there, and just you know, win puck battles, get pucks deep, and just put pucks on net, and like we knew we had a chance to win. And um, we going back to uh, last year before we lost to those guys in the semis in OT. It was really a crusher. I know me personally, I had a chance to uh, win the game at the end, didn't get it done. So it really just, it was, it was a crusher. And just, you just think about that, put that in the back of your mind and just use it as full fuel. And you just go out there and try your best and just just win puck battles. That's all you gotta do. It was definitely a lot of fun playing with in the championship. I mean, I felt like all year we knew it was just gonna be us and them in the championship. We, we were the top two teams in the league and Every game against them was just so high tempo, lots of hitting, lots of scoring, and just really exciting games down to the last second. And, you know, I'm glad that it was against them because we've just had a huge rivalry. They beat us in the playoffs last year in overtime, and, you know, that stung a little bit. So this year we kind of remembered that, kept that in the back of our minds. And, um, you know, in that game we really just went out there and, just focused on dominating all game and you know that's what we did we brought home the championship got the win and you know it was it was great that that game was against them for sure early game jitters would be problematic for the colonials wissahickon would get a majority of the early shots on net here we can see that they set up their player with a pass over and he was wide open the colonials clogged in front of the net the shot was ripped Uter would be able to stop it, but then a player waiting in front of the net would be able to bang it right in and give Wissahickon an early 1-0 lead, not the start the Colonials were looking for. Quickly, the Colonials would answer, and they would set up a sequence of plays that I still am not quite sure what happened, but Carpenter would set out a pass out front, and Captain Dean Keller would be waiting. He then would make a move in front of the net, and shoot and score. Again, I never was totally sure that he was the one that scored, but after reviewing it for almost an hour, I was able to figure out that he was the one that put the first goal in the net for the Colonials to settle the game at 1-1. As you can see, their celebration after the goal heavily consisted of cheering on the crowd and getting them back into it. They're so vocal in so many of these games. 
In many of the games I've called, I've never quite seen something like this, but I thought for sure that was a save, and somehow it squirted past Ben Uter. Wissick would be up 2-1, and they would regain the momentum. In the biggest moments, the biggest players step up. Obviously, Brian Gary would. Just kidding. This is Colonial Classics. Brian Gary was a powerhouse for the Trojans, and he showcased his talent here. He would rip a wrister that would just be blocked by Ben Uter. The puck would still be live, and Wiz Hicken would poke and pry, trying to get another goal. On air, I was quoted as saying that this was the biggest save of Ben Uter's career, and I will stand by that statement to this day. This goal was huge from keeping the Colonials in the game and keeping Wissahickon from running away with it early. Like I said, your biggest players step up in their biggest moments. Pounds would get a breakaway opportunity, but Ben Uter would be waiting there as the brick wall that he is. I know that Jake Weichel is our guest on this episode, but his brother's pretty good too. Luke Weichel would get a breakaway opportunity and shoot, but if you could see, the ref's arm is up in the air, and this would generate a penalty shot, something rarely seen in high school hockey. With four minutes left in the first and the Colonials down by one, this was huge. Luke Weichel would move in, carve through the ice. He's looking... Again, Shea was a little bit weak on his glove side, so he would shoot, and Shea would be able to glove it up. A very nice save for Wissahickon's goalie that would keep the lead in Wissahickon's hands. And that was it, the end of the first period. The Colonials were down by one, and this game was going to be tight. Both teams would go over to their benches and talk to their coaches. I'm sure the Colonials were just saying, hey, we got this, we just need to calm down. Well... The second didn't quite start the way the Colonials wanted it to. Wiss Hicken would get a one-timer and score a goal. Or would they? Watch carefully the ref in the background as he waves his arms. This was a goaltender interference, and despite Wiss Hicken celebrating, the game was still 2-1. No points were added to the board. At this point, I was scratching my head. The Colonials did not look like the same team that I had commentated before. Wissahickon would then do the unthinkable. An absolute laser beam of a shot would go top shelf and go past Ben Uter to give Wissahickon yet again another goal. 3-1. The Colonials are down by two in the second period of the championship. Things are looking dire. This is the point when most teams break. But as we see in the upcoming clips, the Colonials did anything but. Sometimes those you didn't expect to step up, step up in ways that they don't typically do. Jack Mishkin, a newly acquired defenseman at the midseason point, would do exactly that with the laser beam of a shot that I don't think Wiss Hicken even saw as it whizzed past him and put the Colonials only down one. 3-2. The Colonials are now regaining momentum as you can see that crowd banging on the boards. This was the championship and the Colonials were finally starting to settle in and play their game. Next goal, I need the captain to describe himself. And I scored. I just remember we were down on goal end. You know, we really needed a goal bad. And so I talked to Michigan, and I was like, you know, just find me. I'm just going to cherry pick. So just try to hit me with a pass. And so I won the face off back, and he got it back. And, you know, he just hit me with a pass, and I went down on a breakaway. And I just remember scoring, and... Everyone was just going crazy. It was just electric. You know, everybody just got a lot more hype after that. And, you know, it was just a real thrill. <laughs> so the, the crowd was a huge factor that night. That was, that had to be the biggest crowd I've ever played for, uh, pr played in front of. Um, the, you, you know, you just, we, we went down 3 nothing, And obviously there's going to be not, our, our section isn't going to be that loud, but, you know, you put that first goal in and everything just changes, you know, like crowd starts getting pumped up, you know, they're chanting, they're getting in the goalie's head. The crowd's just hyping you up. And, um, you know, once you once you tie it and, and you're looking to go ahead, it just it makes all the difference to have a, a big section in there. Man, I got to talk to the boys about making sure they're visible on camera. They make my job so hard. They move so fastly. This next goal will be scored by Ben Lubis who just at the corner of your eye you'll be able to see gets a shot that goes past Shea to put the Colonials up. 
It's now 4-3. The student section was absolutely jumping, and the Colonials had Wissick and right where they wanted them. In a span of just minutes, the game went from the Colonials almost being down and out to three unanswered goals. On that Aiden scored, I just remember just getting the puck out to me in the slot, and I took a shot. The goalie saved it, made a nice pad save with it. And Aiden popped out to the right side. Aiden was right there to just tap it in. And um, I just remember meeting him behind the net, jumping up, hugging him. Uh, the photographer's got a really cool picture of that. So that moment will definitely last for a while. And, you know, I'll definitely remember it for a while, too. It was, it was just that goal I'll definitely remember for a long time. But the Colonials were still only just heating up. There were still plenty of goals to be scored. Jake Weichel talks about his goal. Yeah, so uh, my goal uh, in the game, we were up 5-3. I'm pretty sure that my goal put us up 6-3. Um, the crowd was still in it just as loud. And um, actually, Dean, so we were, we were at center ice looking for the faceoff. And um, Dean Dean came over to me and was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this forward, just crash and um, just go right up the middle. And I was like, all right, yeah, it sounds like a plan. Dean um, ended up putting putting a perfect uh, puck right up the middle, right off the faceoff. I think I kind of, like, chipped it over the defense and stick. And um, luckily I got a breakaway, um, and I ended up putting it in. But it was huge. I mean, just, that just shows you the, the communication and just, like, how close our team was. Like, Dean just said something. I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. And, like, he just did it perfectly and, like, that's just kind of the trust we had as teammates, and it just ended up being good. Every generation has their rock stars. The 60s had the Beatles. The 80s had Michael Jackson. Well, in 2019, PW had the Colonials. Look at them run out of that tunnel and the fans' reaction to it. Now, I had to dub over the sound from that crowd, but I can tell you they were screaming. And that's what they deserved because they were a championship team that was just 17 minutes away from hoisting their first trophy since 2009. Simply put, the Colonials were so good, they made hockey popular again. They say that there's no better connection than the connection between two brothers. Here the Weichels very evidently show that here at Center Ice. Jake would bring it down, pass it over to his brother Luke, and he would score his second of the third, which would make the game 8-3. Look at that. Family bonding at its finest. The final ticks on the clock would take place and the Colonials were champions. After, I just kind of looked up at the scoreboard and we, we had won the game. And I saw the dog pile at the other end of the ice. Crowd was going crazy, so I just went in, joined the pile. Just, it felt great, you know, like I just... Think about that moment, get chills. It, it was just awesome, great atmosphere, and uh, the crowd was really excited. Yeah, when the clock hit zero, I was so happy, man. Um, it was great to finally win that trophy and know that, you know, we beat Wissahickon in the championship was a great feeling for sure. Um, all game, the plan was just to shut down their best player. And uh, we did that. He had no goals, no, no assists. I think he had a couple penalties. So it, it was a great feeling that, you know, we finally did it, finally got a championship for our school. Uh, I think we represented the hockey team really well all year and I was just it was just a really proud moment and I'm just I was just so ecstatic at that time. Everyone embraced and hugged on the ice as they were preparing to receive their trophy for being the SOL American champions. And that is what made this game a colonial classic. What was so special about this team compared to other teams? I think the constant flow of passion, uh, the heart and pride of this team, commitment since day one. I mean, a lot of these guys came into PW as freshmen. It's been a lot of ups and downs since then, but they've stuck with it. They're committed to the team. They started. We started off in August, and not many winter sports teams start training in August, but 
we did. Um, stuck with it, and uh, really proud of these guys for everything they accomplished. It's been it's been a hard fought season, but we're focused on the the individual and mini battles throughout the season to hopefully um, you know put together a strong season, which we did, and we came out victorious uh, not only in the battle but the war of the season. So in this championship game, I mean, pressure's on. What are you saying to your players to keep them calm, keep them in this game? They should be confident in themselves. I mean, they were. We, we've performed well throughout the season. We've trained hard. Our passing is crisp. Our skating ability is strong. Our goaltending is phenomenal. Uh, ben Uter has performed well against Wissahickon historically. So I knew it was just a matter of time before we got the nerves out and we'd really get going and start popping some goals. So. Um, it was 3-3 three to three for a little bit of time, but once we turned it on, I think they had maybe two or three shots on net the rest of the game. So once we got in the flow of things, PW prevailed and uh, really proud of our guys and what we accomplished. So you're holding that trophy. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I mean, what does this mean to you as a coach being able to hold that trophy right there? You know, I give all the credit to our players for staying committed to this team. Um, but for me, personally, it's pretty important. I played for PW when I was in high school, and uh, we had some really strong performances, but always came up just a little bit short. And ever since I started coaching, um, this is my sixth year as head coach, and we've had some, some tough years, some great years. Came up short, but we finally did it. I'm, I'm really proud. Uh, it's a great accomplishment for myself, but an even bigger accomplishment for the PW ice hockey players and even bigger than that, Plymouth White Marsh High School. I think the biggest reason this team was so successful uh, was just kind of like we were all just so close, you know, like we were always just hanging out. Uh, like when we were just off the ice, we, we were all just kind of friends and we all just kind of hung out together. Um, you know, like I said, the pasta parties and like stuff like that, like you don't get that on every team. Like every team's not able to come together like that. Usually there's there's beef sometimes, but like really we were just all just kind of a, a close knit group. And um, I think that's really just kind of what put us over the edge. You know, like uh, we just, there, there's really no other way to say it. We just really meshed. And um, luckily we, we just had good lines. We had good chemistry and um, we, we had the skill to do it as well. And it just uh, ended up, just coming together all at once one year it was almost like a, a one last dance situation and um we we made the most of it what really made this season special for me was just the winning <laughs> um it was a great feeling to win and everybody was so committed to the team all year and you know everybody just wanted to go out on the ice every game and win and i think that's why our relationship runs so deep because at the end of the year when we won the when we won the championship when you when you see what your work did, it was just a really special moment. And, you know, it really sucks that I'll never be able to lace him up again in a high school hockey game. But I plan on coming back and watching the team next year. And hopefully they can defend our title and win the championship next year. And, you know, it, it just sucks that it's all ending. I mean, endings are really never happy. But... We made a lot of happy moments this year, for sure, that, you know, in the end, we'll make it all okay. So I'm just really excited for the future of the club, and, you know, I just wish them the best of luck.